She just put a tack in on it. Oh, okay. In this week's video, we want to share with you the main steps we took together to take Zaya from landlubber to ocean sailor. These clips comprise some of the earliest video we recorded. Introducing a boat into your relationship can be a risky business. A simple statement to your partner at the outset that if she or he doesn't like it you will sell the boat can be very good insurance. Hopefully following the rest of the steps here should ensure it never comes to that. Zaya was born and raised in Mongolia, a landlocked country which does not even have a proper word for sailboat. While working in Mongolia, I stumbled on Seth and Elizabeth Hines' sailing channel, SV Honeymoon, and it got me dreaming about cruising again. This would be the start of my fourth love affair with sailing. The first discussion Zaya and I had about cruising together was early in 2013 during a holiday in Thailand. We travelled past many anchorages in Thailand where catamarans outnumbered monos 10 to 1. It was obvious that the age of the cruising multi-hull had arrived. We both saw the freedom the cruisers enjoyed and liked the idea of living simply while being able to travel and be close to nature while relying on renewable energy. A cat also seemed like the best chance of getting Zaya hooked on cruising. Our next holiday took us to the Fontaine Peugeot factory in France. Their production line is impressive and turns out an average of one boat every two days. We looked at the Mahi 36, but the price tag of close to $300,000 seemed a lot for us to tie up in a pleasure boat. That cost would make more sense if negatively geared and placed in a charter fleet, which is their primary market. Our intention wasn't to charter, and we were unsure how cruising together would work out. So we talked more about what our objectives were and decided to find the smallest, simplest and highest quality boat that would fit our needs. We would then have a budget left to equip her with good quality gear. We began looking for alternatives and stumbled on James Warren designs. I'd been aware of them for over 40 years, but never looked deeply into them. They had always seemed fringe. It was this simple picture that captured my imagination and set us on our journey. I would read passages of James Warham's design philosophy desire in the mornings. It was clear that the Warham designs fit perfectly with our principles of simplicity and sustainability. Through social media we learned that Neil Hawksford was about to launch his Tiki 38 Glader in the UK. I had family nearby so in mid 2014 we flew over for a visit, met Neil and Gail who kindly let us try Glader on for size with a two hour boat tour. The boat matched our needs perfectly and we could see ourselves living on a Tiki. The boat hunt began. Big thanks Neil and Gail, there are links to them in the description below.
Just because we were waiting for a boat didn't mean we couldn't prepare for voyaging. We began collecting recipes suited to the cruising life and cooked the meals at home for practice. We began downsizing our life to fit on the tiki, giving away our clutter and feeling a lot better for it. Zaya had always been very good at sewing, so we bought a Jordan Series Drogue kit and set to work. Sister Toya joined in to help. Next came swimming, not a common skill in Mongolia. We began swimming together at a local pool. Once Zaya could swim a length, we went back to Thailand where she completed her basic scuba certificate. This boosted her confidence around the sea untold amounts. As we both wanted to travel, it didn't much matter where the boat was located. Oh, I'd send her a little video, right. just in like five seconds, just to yeah, yeah. show her what the Cape Town looks like. Lucky fish came on the market in Cape Town and we bought her immediately. Hello! <laughs> We're here at last! Having a good day finally. Our first full day in Cape Town and we're heading up to Seawater Dam. First good day. got everything. Seems to have the everything in the kitchen sink. Mm -hmm. Filled Fri the fridge with goodies. Mm. How much has cost it? Only 150 isn't it? Yeah, about 150 dollars I suppose. So four days of food and with how many six litres of wine. <laughs> <laughs> mm. have a look. Go and take a look at the view. It's another windy day. Must be 25, 30 knots. And the weather's supposed to die off a little tomorrow and uh, be quite good for it to Tuesday or even Wednesday lunchtime. The lighter winds are around 10 knots. Which might be perfect for. Learning to sail. Before Zaya stepped on board the boat, I enrolled her in a three day dinghy sailing course at the Tivata Sailing Academy. Close to the wind, you have yourself in. Here we're going to do it. Archer, you see where that, that platform is with the drums? Mm -hmm. That's the pump. If we have a boom that can move, okay, mm -hmm. dependent on the wind, and that is controlled by your man sheet. 
Here we met John and Neil, the most delightful and efficient instructors you could ever hope to meet. By learning the basics in a dinghy, she would not be daunted by the scale and physical forces involved on a bigger boat. Having her taught by instructors meant she would learn from people qualified to teach, which is different to being just able to sail. It also meant the husband-wife dynamic was removed from the equation. Zaya would hear plenty enough from me on Lucky Fish, so having the foundations put in place by a third party would help us both later on. And we want to turn the boat into the wind, through the wind. I come across facing forward and I come onto this side. Now notice that I've got everything in the wrong hand. What you do is you take your rope there and back to there. To make sure there's nothing in my way, I push it back, back foot forward and across, duck, and uh, come across, straighten my rudder. Yeah, important to straighten your rudder, otherwise you're going to turn again. Mm -hmm. When the wind is blowing, you're always going to sit on the side where the wind is coming from. Okay? You're always going to have the wind behind you. You're not going to be sitting with the wind there because then you're on the wrong side. Okay, now what I want you to do is to talk me through it. As you're doing it, tell me what you're doing. Do the right foot. Correct. Straighten your rudder. Yeah. yeah. Good. Correct. Get a start across the bay. Her instructors had given her a solid understanding of feeling the wind, points of sail, steering, balance and being master of the boat, man overboard procedure and picking up a mooring. All this in a dinghy in just three days. On the third day we took the opportunity to have our first sail together on a Hobie 16. I gave her the tiller as quickly as possible.
cameraman know what to do here, John. <laughs> We have run out of time this week to finish this list of tips. You can find a link to all the tips in the description box below, including 6 more bonus tips and 10 great sailing movies that proved invaluable in getting Zaya hooked on cruising. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We'd like to give a special thank you to our new patrons, Randy, Mark, Carla and Jorge. It's because of patrons like you that make our productions sustainable. So please, if you haven't already, consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a video and become part of the Lucky Fish story. Feel free to question, comment and give us a like and sub below. Until next time, thank you for watching. Ah!